Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Let's take up the daily quiz for today. The first question, which of the following statements are correct? India has the world's highest death rate from chronic respiratory diseases. The National Green Tribunal has constituted an eight-member national task force to combat air pollution and monitor the remedial steps to improve air quality. Both the statements are correct. Option C is the right answer. This question has been taken up because according to this article in the Hindu, the NGT has constituted an eight-member national task force which will be responsible for combating air pollution in Indian cities and to monitor the remedial steps that are being implemented to improve air quality. The NGT has taken note that India registers the world's highest death rate from chronic respiratory diseases, which is a direct outcome of long-term exposure to polluted air, which is filled with particulate matter. This national task force, which has been constituted by the NGT, will comprise of senior officials from the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and from other concerned ministries, such as the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Petroleum Ministry, Road Transport, Power, Agriculture, Health, etc., along with representation from the Central Pollution Control Board. The mandate of this national task force would be to monitor the enforcement of laid down air quality standards and to establish coordination at all government levels in order to combat air pollution in the country. Now let's look at the second question. OCI cardholders enjoy which of the following benefits? OCI stands for Overseas Citizens of India and the OCI cardholders, they are given a set of privileges and amongst the given options, we need to identify which of the following benefits they can enjoy. To live and work in India indefinitely, enter India multiple times by getting a multi-purpose lifelong visa to visit India, exemption from registering with the Foreigners Regional Registration Office, right to vote in elections, hold government jobs and constitutional posts. Amongst the given options, OCI cardholders do not enjoy the benefits given under Statement 4 and Statement 5. So the correct answer would be option C, 1, 2 and 3 only. Those who hold OCI cards, they can live and work in India indefinitely. They can get a multi-purpose lifelong visa to visit India multiple times and they are even exempted from registering with the FRRO. But however, they do not enjoy the right to vote in elections and they cannot hold government jobs and constitutional positions. This question was taken up because according to this article in the Hindu, the government of India has relaxed the guidelines related to OCI cardholders in order to simplify the registration process and as well as to simplify the process of renewing the OCI cards. Let's look at the third question. Which of the following statements are correct? The RBI has recently set up the Regulations Review Authority 2.0 to review regulatory prescriptions both internally and as well as by seeking suggestions from RBI regulated entities for simplification and ease of implementation. The RBI had set up a similar authority back in 1999 for reviewing regulations, circulars and reporting systems. A deputy governor of RBI has been appointed as the head of the Regulations Review Authority, which would be set up for a period of one year from 1st of May 2021. All the three statements are correct. Option D is the right answer. This question was taken up because we have a related article in the Hindu. See, the Central Bank of India functions as a regulator for the banking sector and it also regulates the country's monetary policy. As a part of this responsibility, as a regulator, the RBI keeps issuing several regulations, circulars, guidelines, etc. To review these regulations and guidelines, the RBI has constituted a Regulations Review Authority 2.0 because this would be the second version of such an authority. Back in 1999, the RBI had set up a similar authority to review its own regulations, circulars and reporting systems. This Regulations Review Authority will review the regulations of RBI internally and it will also seek suggestions from other RBI regulated entities. Such an internal review of RBI's regulations and guidelines will help in their simplification and will make it easier for their implementation and enforcement. Let's look at the fourth question. 
which of the following statements are incorrect national internet exchange of india nixi was set up for the purpose of routing the domestic internet traffic within the country instead of taking it all the way through third countries the government of india delegated the operations of in registry to nixi which operates and manages dot in cctld which is basically india's country code top level domain see both the given statements are correct hence option d is the right answer see the national internet exchange of india or nixi is a key organization as far as the country's internet infrastructure is concerned it is essentially a not for profit company established in 2003 and registered under the companies act it functions as a neutral exchange for the country where all the isps come together that is the internet service providers and they route and channel domestic traffic within their networks because otherwise even domestic traffic will have to be routed through third countries which would result in unnecessary delays and increase latency and increase the pressure on domestic bandwidth so as a neutral exchange the isps come together under nixi and they route domestic internet traffic within india without having the need to route this traffic through third countries and in 2004 the government of india delegated the task of maintaining the in registry to nixi so nixi is responsible for operating and managing the dot in dns or the domain name system which is essentially india's country code top level domain and nixi is also responsible for promoting india's transition from ipv4 to ipv6 because around the world the internet protocol which is a global communication protocol standard is being upgraded from ipv4 to ipv6 this question on nixi was taken up because according to this press release from the ministry of electronics and information technology nixi has launched three path breaking initiatives the first initiative is known as ip guru or ipv6 expert panel and this group extends support to all the indian entities and organizations who are facing technical difficulties in migrating to ipv6 standards the second initiative is the establishment of the nixi academy to educate both technical and non technical people in the country to learn and relearn critical technologies such as ipv6 which are usually not taught in regular educational institutions this will help india in the faster adoption of ipv6 standards the third initiative is the launch of a portal known as nixi ip index which is essentially a ipv6 index portal for the internet community in the country this portal will help the government the industry and the public to understand the adoption rate of ipv6 standards in india and as well as around the world these three key initiatives that have been launched by nixi is expected to speed up india's adoption of ipv6 standards now let's look at a question from the 2017 prelims paper with reference to global climate change alliance which of the following statements are correct it is an initiative of the european union it provides technical and financial support to targeted developing countries to integrate climate change into their developmental policies and budgets it is coordinated by the world resources institute and the world business council for sustainable development amongst the given statements the third statement is incorrect so option a is the right answer see the global climate change alliance was launched as an initiative of the european union and it is designed to provide technical and financial support to least developed countries and small island states but however these institutions are not associated with the global climate change alliance hence option a is the correct answer now coming to the fact of the day let's talk about the united nations food system summit 2021 see the term food systems refers to a constellation of activities that are related to food it covers the production of food by the farmers its transportation storage warehousing processing including value addition to food products and finally its consumption all these activities associated with food they constitute the food systems and they all play a critical role in not just nutrition and health of human beings but also with regard to general human development many other aspects of human development including education poverty 
environment protection, climate change, creation of jobs, etc. They are all connected to the global food systems. And hence, the UN Secretary General has given a call for hosting the first ever UN Food Systems Summit in September 2021. Through this summit, the United Nations intends to promote positive changes in the global agri-food systems through strategic actions and interventions in order to speed up the world's progress towards achieving the 2030 Agenda Goals, which is nothing but your SDG Goals or Sustainable Development Goals. This summit will focus on various aspects that shape the global food systems, both at the national level and the global level. And through strategic interventions, it will try to accelerate our progress towards attaining our SDG targets. Under the Sustainable Development Goals of the UN, there are 17 broad goals that have been identified. And directly or indirectly, each of these goals, they are connected to our food systems. And hence, it's very critical to ensure that we develop healthier and more sustainable and more equitable food systems. This summit has the objective of changing the way we think about our food, including the way in which it is produced, the way in which it is consumed, the way in which it is transported and processed. This upcoming summit will adopt a participative and consultative approach and provide a platform for all the stakeholders, including national governments, provincial governments, independent consultants, including private players. And it will also bring together scientists, policy makers, healthcare institutions, academia, entrepreneurs, consumer groups, environmental activists, etc. It will act as a key platform for all important stakeholders, including the farmers and the tribes. And five specific action tracks have been identified, which will be the focus area of the summit. These five action tracks include safe and nutritious food, sustainable consumption patterns, nature positive production, advanced equitable livelihoods and resilience to vulnerabilities, shocks and stress. In the light of this upcoming first ever UN Food System Summit, India has held a national dialogue under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare because India, which accounts for nearly 18% of the global population, has enormous stakes in the global food systems. In preparation for the summit, India has already volunteered to take up action track number four, that is advanced equitable livelihoods. And the government of India has already constituted a high level interdepartmental group under the chairmanship of a senior member of the Niti Aayog, along with representatives from concerned ministries. So this happens to be India's first national level dialogue on agri-food systems in preparation for the upcoming UN Food System Summit. And India is working towards aligning its food systems towards achieving the SDG targets by 2030. So with this, let's conclude our discussion for today. Thanks for watching.